and a special welcome to Kit, who's uh, joining us for the first time today. If you'd all just like to put your uh, devices on mute. Um, so Kit has uh, speaking but no voting rights. And I think Kit, you've met all, met all the team now. So I just want to quickly, yeah. I just quickly want to talk about health and safety. So due to COVID-19 restrictions, council are holding this meeting via video conference, which means elected members and members of the public can't be physically present. All participating members count for the purpose of the meeting quorum in accordance with clause 25B of schedule seven to the Local Government Act 2002. This meeting will be recorded and made available on Council's YouTube channel via a link on Council's website. A summary of the meeting will also be available on Council's website shortly following the meeting in accordance with Clause 47A of the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987. Um, so this, uh, please treat this as we would a normal council meeting uh, and all the same rules apply. Um, if the meeting extends past an hour, which I'm anticipating it will, we'll stop and have a five minute break at 11 a.m. just to rest our eyes. And uh, when we do that, if the, the recording will continue. So if um, you please just mute your microphones and turn off the videos. Um, so the way uh, I think it might be easiest to run today is if you put yourselves on mute and then what I'll do is alphabetically go through to each member of the team to end of any comments and then uh, uh, following that if you've got further comments just put your hand up and we can take it from there. So thank you everyone. Um, so, uh, under apologies, A2, so no apologies have been received, but Suzanne, we might make a note that Harry and Alex uh, are delayed and make a note of the time when they come in. So, under conflicts of interest, are there any conflicts of interest to declare? No conflicts of interest, thank you. Uh, public participation, there are no public participants. A actions from public participation, there are no actions from public participation. Uh, A6, extraordinary business, we have no extraordinary items of business. Going on to A7, minutes for confirmation. Uh, just, hello, can you hear me? Sorry. We can hear you, Lee. Okay, can you hear me with that? Yep. Yep, all good. Good. Um, so, uh, I'd just like to have someone to nominate uh, that we have received, uh, let me just go on to it, the minutes. It's a long time ago. Uh, but can I have a mover that the Minutes and Finance Ward and Risk Committee meeting held on the 11th of December are true and correct record? Yeah, they will. Councillor Glenflo <clears throat> and seconded by Councillor Jepson. Thank you. Um, so uh, can you all unmute your buttons? And uh, so all in favour, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All of those against, raise your hand and say no. Thank you, the motion is carried. Um, so does anybody have any comments uh, regarding the minutes? Anything that you want to comment on? Thank you, Councillor Jeffy. Um, under apologies, uh, you've got me when I was there. I was <laughs> I, present and I was an apology, so. Did you come slightly late to that meeting from memory, Jim? Oh, I think I did. I did, yeah. yes. So, Suzanne, how do you want to handle that? So, if the minutes are correct, we don't actually need to make any changes. Um, so, yeah, if Jeppy came late, he was, must have submitted an apology for being late, and the time that he entered would be under the attendees at the very top. Is that correct? Yep. 
Yeah. Yep. So at the minute, they're correct then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from anyone? Just a quick note for the team uh, and uh, B2, uh, just to review the relevant policies to establish a process for use of reserve funds. So I think uh, it's just really more of a reminder everybody that we do need to review that. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to um, A8, notices of motion. So we've got no notices of motion. And then uh, decision reports of the chief executive and staff. So amendments B1 is the amendment to the financial delegation policy. Um, so we're now going to consider that. Can I have a mover to receive the report? Thank you, Councillor West. And seconded, thank you, Councillor Vickery. Can everyone please unmute yourselves for the vote? All in those favour, uh, raise your hand and say aye. 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 And all of those against, please raise your hand and say no. Excellent, the motion's carried. Um, Katrina, would you like to make a comment on uh, this report? Sure, thanks Lee. Um, so the reason for this uh, review of the financial delegation report is because of um, the uh, restructure within the organisation and um, bringing on new roles and renaming of roles. So that's um, uh, the main purpose of uh, reviewing the delegations. Um, so with the new structure, we, before um, uh, I think it was changed about January or February. But previously, um, we had uh, the three GMs that sat under the CEO and then the third line of managers under that. And um, Harry um, in the restructure has changed that. So we've now got um, six members of the executive leadership team. So we've now got um, the CFO, um, policy and governance manager, GM of partnerships and operations, um, GM of um, planning and regulatory, um, HR and corporate support, and also comms manager, all sit at the um, ELT level. So that required me to have a look at those delegations as well. Um, so what I have proposed in um, this delegation is to have, uh, because I've looked at the delegations on need rather than um, any sort of sort of hierarchical level. So I think that um, I've retained uh, the CFO, the um, GM partnerships and ops, and the GM um, planning and reg as $100,000 delegation limits, and then the then the rest of the EL team members drop down to $50,000. Um, so those are the main changes. The other thing that I've changed is I've actually, um, just for, for clarity, a little bit of transparency maybe, um, in the schedule, I have um, taken the part about unplanned expenditure out of Appendix 1, and I've given it its own appendix so that um, it's, it's, it's clearer. Um, because it just sat before an appendix one, and I think it's a little bit clearer um, to have its own appendix. Those really are the main changes that I made. Everything else is really just a few, a few sort of grammatical things, and um, but mainly it's all around the um, the job titles. Okay. 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 So I'm just going to go through uh, initially for any comments. And then at the end of that, if anyone wants to make further comments, we can do that. So, Pam, uh, would you like to start? I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. Eek. <laughs> okay. Um, Katrina, I think that the changes that you have made um, are really, really good. But um, I just have... Um, some concerns about the clarity of the document. Um, for example, on um, page nine, which would be uh, page five on Stella, um, there's the, um, the delegation for any unplanned extent. There's a, a comment there in the second paragraph down. 
um, says delegations for any unplanned expenditure or use of reserves in excess of approved annual plan or long-term plan budget of this policy. So it sort of doesn't quite quite read right there. Ah, you're right. Mm. Something's missing. It was supposed to say, and it's obviously got deleted at some point. <laughs> and I haven't picked it up. My apologies. It's supposed to say that the delegations for any unplanned expenditure or use of reserves in excess of the approved annual plan or long-term plan budgets. Um, gosh, it doesn't make sense at all. Um, it was going to refer to Appendix 2. Okay, cool. <laughs> so could we leave that with you to just Absolutely. Like reword for us? Yes. Um, I've, I've noted uh, a number of things within there that don't sit comfortably with me. Um, and that is around the word, some of the wording and some of the delegation. And okay. I just feel that some of this really, really needs a lot more clarification than, than what we've got there. Um, just, I'm not quite sure how to to, to go about that. Is, is, um, what, what specifically you sort of, um, are, there, are there any specific areas that you think need to be, um, to be highlighted or looked at? Your, where do your concerns really lie? For example, if I just flick through to page 15, yeah. um, which is page, sorry, I've got a hard copy and a, a Stella up. Um, so it's page 11 on Stella. Which is Appendix 1. It's Appendix 1. Just This is just an example. Um, the South Wairapa District Council delegation schedule for approved expenditure, but that doesn't, approved expenditure doesn't clarify whether that's budgeted in the annual plan, whether it's budgeted in the long term plan, or is it approved by a manager around, um, you know, just I guess approved it's, um... by a manager for a, for a sub manager to do some work around it. Sure. I feel it needs some clarity. And then as you go down that page, you come to other planned operating schedule and you've got um, like a limit of over 100,000. Yes. But there's no top limit on that. So you could go up to 300 million or 3 million or something like that. So I just if we're going to do something with this policy, I think that maybe what I'm trying to say is I think it needs to maybe come back to yourself um, and Karen to have a have a have a look at and maybe just put a whole lot more clarity and wording around what's actually meant. And I also feel that um, any unapproved expenditures certainly needs a lot more wording around that. I'm, my gut feeling is that un, unapproved expenditures should come out altogether. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have it. It should all come back to council for unapproved expenditure. So, okay. um, and especially the use of reserves. I, I think that re use of reserves should be either um, a far decision that um, the money comes out of that or um, it comes back to council depending on the limit of it. So, I, mean, I think there's certainly lots. So that's just some of the things that I've thought of in there. So other councillors may want some words or you may see Karen come, come up and we've got her lovely face there. So she obviously has thought of some comment around that. So I'll leave that to... Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, I think it would be good to have some feedback from some of the other councillors, perhaps before um, and their thoughts um, before Karen and I respond, perhaps. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is um, for all the councillors to uh, sh share their thoughts, and at the end uh, we might come back to Katrina and Karen to make some further comments. So, uh, Councillor Ems, would you like to make any comments on this? 
Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. I'd agree with what Pam's saying. In fact, I'd, I think we're going to cover some of these points in your, um, your follow-up letter, Lee, when we talk about, I'm confused about over budget or, or unapproved, because there's some of those numbers there which we, which we had flagged, and I'm picking that they will be covered, they should have been covered either, either unapproved or if they've gone over budget, we should have had some uh, indication before we got to that stage. But you've covered it in your letter, so let's not, let's not drag that through. Um, so just make a note of that, that'd be good. Um, just, and I, and I just thank you as a, as a new boy on the block, um, page 11, I was never quite clear in my own mind about the contract arrangements between the Rural Mahanga Roads and Wellington Water. And it's not really until you read that you actually work, I worked out what it was because a number of the comments coming through in the paper are for water restrictions assigned by Wellington Water, uh, not by South Wairapa. But it's when you see mm. the delegations, mm. I can understand why, but it, mm. I, 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 and it's my fault, but it, it actually- No, 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 you're right. I mean, you know, we all read these policies and then put them away and, and sort of, you know, move on to something else and sort of, you know, forget what the, perhaps what they've, that, that there's something in there about that. But yes, this is where um, you're right. This is where it does cover Royal Mahanga Roads and Wellington Water and that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, um, it's really, it's really, a, it's a, um, it's a bouquet. A thank you, because I'd, I'd missed the point on that over the last few months. So th I'm happy with that. But if we can come back later on, Lee, to that stuff, the, the over budget or the unapproved, that would be, I'd be quite yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gareth. Okay, so Jeppy, Councillor Jepson, would you like to make some comments now? Yeah, sure would. Um, Pam and Garrick actually have covered a few of my thoughts, but look, I agree with the changes. But I'm just thinking now in this modern day, when we're all on Zoom, the unapproved expenses I think if it comes to the point that, you know, we have to spend money, we don't have to wait for a meeting. We can call up, have a Zoom meeting in the evening and discuss and approve it. You know, um, in the delegations here, you've got, and I think are probably a bit low, up to 100,000, um, particularly in the roading. You know, if we have these storm events, which we can um, go back, 10 or 15 years uh, when we didn't have any money, we had a huge storm event and uh, the council had no money. So all, all the uh, road opening that was delayed until they borrowed the money. So what I'm saying there is 100,000 doesn't go a long way uh, when you have uh, these one-off um, storm events. So maybe we um, should think about that, whether we... Uh, give the delegate uh, a higher delegation or have the ability to get the councillors together the night after the event and approve extra funding so you know may can you work that in katrina or um look I, I, obviously i'll have to talk to karen and suzanne the experts about that but i um there's no reason why you couldn't have an extraordinary meeting if there was a large storm event like that yeah, yeah. um to make to make that decision um and so that you're comfortable with that. Yep, thank you. That's all I've got, Lee. Thank you, Jeppy. Um, so, Councillor West. Great, my dear. Okay, um, so um, in the organisational chart, there's an amenities and solid, there is no role called amenities and solid waste manager, is that correct? If there's not, it's probably because it hasn't been um, updated yet. We have one manager that is, does amenities and solid waste. And I'm pretty sure that's the title. But I can check that. Can, yeah. I, can I jump in there? Yeah. Um, the, the amenities and solid waste manager still um, has... has Abbreviations is are uh, still AM as amenities manager, but it means the uh, the amenities and solid waste manager. Uh, what, what, uh, probably what I'm trying to get at is that they need to marry up with each other. It's kind of like if we've got an organisational chart and then we've got a delegations, they should be able to at least match. Yeah. Okay. So if there is, yeah. 
Um, and one of the other things was with the, regards to where it says roading manager with regards to Rua Vahanga roads. Um, can we actually just change that and just put roading manager bracket with regards to, um, we've done it other, in other areas of the appendix. I'm just wondering whether it'd be pretty. Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Cool. Um, <laughs> it's just semantics, really. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, I'll just write a note so that. Okay. And the other query that I've got with regards to in the 75 to 100k um, subdelegates. Yeah. Um, the GMP is not mentioned in the actual report. Yet it's actually in the appendix. I'm just wondering, is that a mismatch? Can you, sorry, can you just, um, where are you referring to, Brenda? Cool, just okay, wait, I'll just Sorry. Too many documents. I know. <laughs> okay, so, let me get this one up. I was trying to. Right, what have I got here? Okay, and so in the um, in the amendments t in two point six is it? Point one. Two point six point one. Should two point six point. You're right. Yeah, Should it doesn't it doesn't mention the GMPE, but in the Correct. appendix it does. So is to. that an oversight or does it need to be changed? Yes, it needs to be changed. Cool. You're correct. Yeah. Um, and I agree with Jeppy with regards to um, what off events that would come in excess of $100,000. Um, I think it'd be more prudent to actually have an extraordinary meeting. Okay. Um, so that's, that's my comments. Thanks. Thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, well spotted. Um, so, Councillor Vickery, your turn for comments. You're not... You've got to unmute. We still can't hear. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I um, understand the purpose of this uh, revised document and this discussion. It's a uh, uh, significant change to the nail corporate structure and also recommendations and to a more practical level, and I agree with uh, Councillor Jepson that, that, I, that the, um, the limits seem practical. Um, I do wonder how many times we're going to go to 100,000 planned or unplanned expenditure with certification. I just wonder what sort of feedback mechanisms there are for, for such uh, use of delegations. It's just a question I have no, no suggestions at all. But um, I, I do support uh, Councillor Glenzo's request for greater clarity around those types of expenditure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vicky. Is that everything you want to mention? So, um, I have just got some comments as well. By and large, I agree with. Um, everything that's been said. Um, I don't personally like the use of planned expenditure because I don't believe it gives enough clarity. I think it should be approved and budgeted expenditure and that should be reflected through the whole document. Um, with respect to uh, the unbudgeted and unplanned reserves in OPEX and CAPEX, uh, I have a concern that there's no clarity around when that might occur. Um, GP's talked about roads, and we do know it is a major event that it could easily go up to 100,000. But uh, I have concerns that these amounts are just, uh, there's no narrative around it. Um, I've talked to most people, I think, about the use of Zoom if we um, an unexpected um, amount comes up that we have to approve. And I think we've got the ability to do it. We're all now pretty comfortable with Zoom. So how you might word that, Katrina, but or whether it would just be called an extraordinary meeting. I think uh, everybody's um, said that 
we could have a meeting in the evening if that suited people, if there was a, a need for it. So I don't quite know how you'd word that, but I would prefer that course of action. Um, the other area around unplanned use of reserves, so the original narrative was that it could be used in consultation with the mayor and a CEO. Uh, I would prefer the, myself as chair of uh, to be included in that, but we may like to have a rethink that it just unilaterally has to be approved by far in the first instance. So um, I think everybody's covered the rest. I just wonder whether, given that we've got the next FAR meeting on the 24th of June, I just wonder whether it might be better to go back, have a look at the issues that we've got, and then represent it to us on the 24th of June. Uh, I don't know yeah. what anybody... Um, sorry, Lee. Is, um... Um, do you want Kip to make any comment or not? Before we sort of summarise? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That would sorry. be next for you. Yes, oh, sorry, so sorry. I thought we were... Um... <laughs> no, no, just, just before we go, though, Kit, have you... Sorry, did you have any comments um, around this policy? Any other issues that you were concerned about? Look, I think with a, with a document like this, first of all, it's fantastic that it's being reviewed and everybody's comments are, are, are spot on. I think just from an overview perspective with something like this, you, you've, got to give, you've got to give a balance to it to allow the executive to be able to get on with their job. So that, that should just come into the thinking of what the limits are, whatever they, whatever they fall to. And if it's budgeted, then they have even more reason to be able to get on with their job. If it's not budgeted, I think that's the key, or approved, that's one of the keys, that there's got to be a mechanism for, if it's, if it's a situation where it's decisions need to be made, they should be, they should be able to be made, but there needs to be a mechanism for instant reporting back to mm. a group, whatever group that might be, on what's happened. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is pretty much what everybody else has said, that, that this is this is a good, good document being reviewed well. Um, we've just got to make it that it's a document that allows people to get on with their jobs. Good point. Thank you, Kit. Uh, so, oh, sorry, Pam, a Clemzo, Councillor Clemzo. Um, could I, um, Lee, could I just add in another um, Section for um, Katrina and Karen to have a look at. Um, on page 13, which is section 4, affixing the common seal, and on Stella page, whoops, I've lost Stella at the moment. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. Thank you for bringing that up, Pam. Um, I think there, there needs to be some, um, some wording uh, around when the, when the um, seal is is um, used and it also needs some wording around the fact that once the seal is used that 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 needs to be coming back to the next council meeting after the seal has been used and I looked at um, Tararua Council and they've got quite a lot of um, quite a good lot of wording around around their their seal and, and the use of that and what to put in the council, next council minutes. But just if we could have some clarity around that, because I think that thank you, Pam, for bringing that up. Because um, we tentatively thought once the seal is executed and registered, it should come to the following council meeting. But if there's a better narrative in the Tararua. Um, plans, then I'm quite happy for you to have a look at that. Yes, yeah, because in our document we don't have anything to say what happens, we just say that they're authorised to use the seal, but it doesn't say um, in what capacity or, or the fact that it then has to be ratified. Thank you, Thanks, Pam. Lee. So, Katrina and Karen do... 
maybe start with Katrina and then Karen or the whichever way around suits you. That's fine. Um, thank you everyone for your um, comments. Uh, they've, uh, they've been uh, really helpful and I think um, I agree. I think we need to, we do need to put some more um, thought and clarification into um, into what we want in here. Um, and the feedback that I've received from you all is that we need some very clear clarity around um, the wording throughout the document and whether we use budgeted versus unbudgeted or planned versus unplanned. Um, so there is a little bit of confusion there and we'll go back and definitely look at that. In terms of the, um, the uh, I agree, we need a, um, some more clarity around the use for unplanned expenditure and that is um, something that I think the committee needs to be comfortable with before it goes obviously to the council um, for um, approval. Um, so there's different types of um, unbudgeted or unplanned cost, uh, which I think you need to think about. Um, so you can go, um, we could have a one-off event, an emergency event, and I agree with, um, with the comments that everyone's made is we don't want to be holding everything up because if there's a major thing that happens, we want to be able to get on with it. So you need to be able to let the, um, the CEO have enough scope to be able to do that. Um, there's also expenditure where um, there might be something that is not in the annual plan, so a, um, a piece of work that has not been budgeted in the annual plan that perhaps um, the officers or the CEO would like to do. Um, so that is also unplanned, unbudgeted work. What are your thoughts around that? Whether you think that anything over a certain value may need to come back to uh, the committee or council or, and what those limits are. And there is also um, over budgeting. So, so sorry, what I mean is overspending in terms of, um, and this is where you can sort of get a bit of a creep. And um, so it might be that you are, um, you know, it's not, it's the, the unplanned expenditure which is, is not one big cost, but it's lots of little things that add up to, um, to quite a lot at the end of the day. So, what I'm what I'm feeling is that we want to try and see if we can cover all of those options. Would that be a fair summation of um, of what you're thinking? So has anyone got any thoughts around? Because I, I guess from we, what Karen and I can do, um, and certainly what Charlie and I can do, is go away and have a look at other councils as a starting point and what they've got in their delegations and their um, wording and how they um, sort of designate um, unplanned expenditure because I'm thinking that that is um, the, the, the area that we're all thinking needs a little bit more work and a bit more clarity. Um, so we can definitely go and do that and maybe uh, we can liaise with you, um, Lee, in the first instance to see if we can, um, you know, come to um, an agreement um, before it comes back to FAR. Would that be something that you'd be, is it, are the rest of the committee comfortable with that? Um, I'll just, uh, just hear first from uh, GP, Councillor Jepson. Yep, sure. Uh, yes, <clears throat> Katrina, I totally agree. I think we're the... Um, a lot of the unexpected cost comes, particularly if they're digging, uh, repairing a water line or what have you. you. They get the road dug up, they find a section of piping that needs renewing. We need to be able to do it then. And, and I totally agree. And I think that we've got to have some mechanism in place that those people can go ahead straight away and get it done. Because, you know, that's the opportune time to do it and less costly, I guess, to, you know, the, yeah. the roads being dug up. So, yeah, I think it does need a little bit more thought. Maybe look at, as you suggested, look at other councils, how they've worded it, and uh, see what we can put into ours. Thank you. Thank you, JP. Councillor West? Um, I think at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> when you're talking about the different types of unbudgeted, whether it's a deficit in spending or something like that. I think that at the end of the day, the council needs to be clear and transparent as to um, providing a level of comfort for their 
the spending of money because at the end of the day it's at the end of the day to be brutally honest it's the ratepayers money that's being spent and people want to know what it's being spent on and that there's a level of comfort that it's been uh, spent wisely I suppose not that you would not spend it unwisely but I just think just for clarity purposes yeah prudently yeah <laughs> Thank that's you. all I have to say Thank you, Councillor West. Uh, Councillor Brickery. And, and following on from those uh, those thoughts, um, and not hidden, uh, uh, is there a need for... You're fading out, uh, Ross. Is, is there a need for an unplanned expenditure report to be submitted to this committee? So uh, it was a bit difficult to hear you, uh, Ross, but so I think I got that. Is there a need for any unplanned expenditure or use of reserves to be submitted to the committee? Is that, have I got that clear? I think I have. Did you get that, Katrina? Uh, yes, I yes I did. I think that that was um, that was I, I think that's the point that I was getting from Ross. From what I could hear, is that um, he was saying, is there a need to have a um, unplanned expenditure report come to FAR um, each meeting um, so that you are fully aware of um, anything that's come up? That's that's correct. Okay, just before Councillor. West, um, Alex has just popped in. Yep, sorry, we're just the meeting, so welcome, Alex. Uh, so and welcome, Harry, as well. Oh, oh, Harry's there too. Yeah, I do apologize, we got held up in an order New Zealand meeting. No, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, so we're just discussing the delegation policy. Um, so, Councillor West, uh, you had something you wanted to say? I said it. Oh, great. Okay, so Councillor Colenso. Sorry, I seem to be talking a lot. Um, Katrina, when you're doing that, um, the re looking at the policy again, can you look to see whether the expenditure is for a single job or, a, or you know, like a, a part of a contract or whether it's a one-off thing? So because lots of little individual things add up to a lot of money. And yeah. so we just need to, to have a clarification whether that expenditure is for a single item or for a, for a whole job. A whole project. A whole yep. project. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And I think we've seen an example of that with the Wellington Water, where there's a whole lot of little 6,000, 10,000, et cetera, which have all added up to be quite a significant amount. Um, and just around that, Katrina, you might want to apply that to even budgeted, you know, have a look at that whole area of, of individual items or projects. Thank you, Pam. Uh, has anybody else got any comments? Uh, Karen, so... Thanks, Councillor Hay. Yes, just to, um, I guess, put a bit of context around the, um, the review, um, uh, we've identified that there is a much bigger piece of work that needs to happen uh, for the Council, which is um, pulling all our delegations together uh, um, into a, a delegations register um, that's accessible and that reflects the, you know, the delegations across the business. And so this is part of that, uh, that piece of work that needs to happen. Um, so in terms of formatting and uh, some of the minor changes that, uh, you know, the, the, the policy um, and the delegations could benefit from, I think we can um, put that work into that, that broader piece of work. Um, and so for this next policy, I think we could just address those key areas that councillors are, are raising to us now. Um, because of course we do need to, to get on and reflect the uh, new structure of uh, for officers so that we can get on and do the work so that's that's my proposal is that we just address those key areas that um uh, are cause for concern at the moment to come back to to the next meeting um 
so that's really the context there. Just in terms of meetings, I just wanted to uh, remind everyone that um, the ability that we have at the moment to come together by Zoom is because of uh, the, the COVID crisis and we are operating under the COVID notice that allows us to do that. Um, that notice is due to expire at the end of June and we don't really know what's going to happen then. Um, so we will go back to our normal meeting schedules. We can have extraordinary meetings and emergency meetings, but of course, they've got very limited public notice um, and we want to be able to be operating in a clear and transparent manner, of course. So we will need to reflect that in any delegations that we have. Um, we can, of course, come together on Zoom um, for briefings um, and to provide information, but any decision making really needs to go back to that, that, um, that, that structure that we, we uh, will probably go back to um, quite shortly. Um, right. Pretty sure that's all, yeah, that, that's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Karen. It actually was one of my questions about if you've got any feeling that they might allow this type of Zoom meeting to go ahead with voting uh, opportunities. Do you get any sense about that? Uh, it really just comes back down to the quorum and the, the legislation requires it's a quorum of those physically present. And so if we are going back to public meetings, um, then I don't see any reason why um, that would change. Um, uh, we have the ability, of course, under current standing orders to, for people to be able to zoom in, but we always still need to, to meet those quorum requirements. Okay, thank you. Um, so has anybody else got any other comments or are we happy for uh, Karen and Katrina to go back and present this again to us in June? But is there a problem with the current ability with the delegations if if you know we're just going to hold it all up too much is what i'm asking i guess um, no Sorry. We, we're fun, we've am I, i'm not on mute we are functioning at the moment um it's it's a little bit um um, we're working around it, so so it's it's working at the moment. I think we need to um, to, as Karen said, get something in place as soon as we can, so that to reflect the new structure. However, um, I think that that can. I'm quite happy that that can wait until our next meeting, um, if that's in June, because um, that's not really that far away, to be honest. Um, and then we can get some more clarity there. Um, so I think I think it will work fine, is what I'm saying, um, Lee, in the interim. Okay. So if everybody just, um, if you could just put your hands up if you're happy with that approach. So Jeppy, yeah. Uh, I just can't see Brenda. Where, where are you, Brenda? Are you happy with that approach? Oh. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you, Pam. Right. Um, sorry, sorry, can I just say something um, just quickly before it goes to the council? Can we review it first or can we have a copy of it first? So I think um, uh, the short answer to that is yes. I think um, that, that my approach that I would be looking at doing is to, to work with Charlie and um, Karen put something together that um, we feel reflects what um, the concerns that everyone has raised and then we will liaise with Lee as chair around that so that she's comfortable with that and then it will come to the next farm meeting for you all to see and make further comment on and hopefully get to a position where we can then take it to the next council meeting. Cool, thank you. And just around that, if there's anything I'm unclear about or unsure, I want your opinions. I'd just arrange a Zoom meeting so that we could discuss it before the next FAR meeting, if that was what was needed. So, okay, so um, let me just go back to that. So uh, that we can close that discussion because we're not approving the uh, delegation policy today. Uh, do we need... Um, to have a line, Suzanne, which is this is going to be reconsidered at the next farm meeting. Um, you don't need to. I mean, if you can, if you want to make a, a resolution, you can. But I can just include it in the minutes, and, and officers are clear of your instructions, so that's fine. You can just okay. let the recommendation lapse. Okay. And Pam, did you want to say something else? Sorry, I was just going to say, is um, Katrina having a look at the dollar amounts in there as well as the wording? Yes. Thanks. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, so thank you everyone for those very constructive comments. Um, now we're just moving on to the chairperson report. Um, let me just go on, just bear with me, sorry for a second. Sorry, bear with me. Um, okay. Lee, you want the grant policy first. Page 40, Lee. Yeah. Ah, that's right, sorry. So, um, can I please have uh, someone to uh, nominate or uh, the grant policy? Um, can I have a mover to receive the policy? So, Councillor Jeppe, thank you. And can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Vickery. Um, can you please all unmute yourself for, and uh, say aye? So all of those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Uh, all of those against the motion, so the motion is carried. Right. Um, so just in terms of the grant policy, do you want to make a comment, Katrina or Karen, in the first instance, or would you prefer to hear feedback from uh, the councillors first. Karen, uh, this is Karen's policy, so I, I think I'll leave it over to Karen to drive this one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just, just very briefly, um, councillors had indicated earlier in the year that um, the preference would be to separate out the grants as what usually happens through the annual plan process. Um, because there was a feeling that the, um, it was distracting from both processes. Um, and so uh, that was approved for inclusion in the consultation document that's gone out to the public, that we would change the, the process there and, uh, and consider grants separately. So this is effectively doing just that. Um, it's only looking at the process um, by which um, grants will be considered so that will include setting up a subcommittee as a, as a, a subcommittee of this committee um, to consider uh, grants once a year and if there's any uh, further um, unspent um, grant money then we could have another round in February. Um, it doesn't look at the substantive nature of the policy so the eligibility criteria and other criteria in awarding the grants um, we felt when we started to look at the, um, the policy, uh, councillors had uh, indicated that the Carterton policy was, um, was a, good, a good model to follow um, and officers have started to look at that and there were quite a few changes there in the criteria um, and it would be necessary to carry out public consultation on any changes to the policy that, that were of a substantive nature because um, of course uh, uh, the public would be um, uh, potentially disadvantaged if we changed the criteria and so we needed to give everybody an opportunity to comment on that. So this is a two-stage process and um, we're just amending the, the process um, this year and then we'll look at and do some more work around any amendments to the, uh, the criteria to be included in, on the consultation in the LTP. Great, thanks very much Karen. Um, so I'll just go around uh, again um, so, Councillor Clinzo, if you've got any comments, please. I'm not sure being a, a surname with the letter C is a good thing or not. <laughs> well, let's, let's, switch it, let's switch it round a bit then. How about Garrett, Councillor Evans, would you like to start the ball rolling? Uh, yes, look, I have been through it. Um, I must say it's quite a substantial document. It's really the criteria, once again, the process I'm, I'm not unhappy with. Um, but the criteria, but I'm, I'm, I'm pleased we're going to go back to that at some later stage. Is there any urgency on this? That was my question. Uh, Karen, would you like to respond to that? 
Um, the, the urgency is that we uh, we have not put out uh, any any um, receiving any grants applications, of course, this year. So we do need to make a recommendation um, at this meeting um, to to approve it, subject to any minor amendments that you may have. So that, that can be approved by by council, um, and then we can uh, start to advertise um, for applications um, and set up the subcommittee to receive those. So um, there is. There's some, some sense of urgency, yes. Okay, okay, so we can go ahead and set up a subcommittee and still have another, have another go at it is what I'm concerned about. In terms of the criteria. Oh, so certainly in terms of criteria, we will be working with a much bigger piece of work um, throughout uh, the, the rest of this year and then consulting through the LTP. So yes, we can, we can, have, we can ask the subcommittee to actually have a look at that if, if that's what you prefer. Okay, th I, I prefer that, but that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, so, um, Councillor Jepson, you any comments around that? I had this. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. We can I, hear uh, you. Yeah, I um, had the same concerns as Garrick, and um, Karen has answered it. Um, so I'm I'm happy uh, the way that we plan to do it. So thanks. Okay. So, so Councillor West. Um, so my question is, is that by moving to a different kind of like granting model, um, is there an additional cost or is it more cost effective? So, Katrina, do you want to answer that? Um, so, no, I don't think there will be any cost in moving to a different model. It's just about us um, uh, deciding internally what that model needs to look like and how um, we want to frame the whole um, policy, uh, grants policy, sorry, and um, the criteria for applying for grants and everything. Is that what, are you, is that what you're asking, Brenda? Are you thinking more of an internal cost or cost to? Well, it's kind of like both. It's kind of like, you know, um, I suppose for the want of words, when you make changes to the way things are done, um, are you making changes because it's more efficient or are you making changes um, so that it's more cost effective? Or so cost effectiveness is, uh, isn't coming to play. We, we thought there was an opportunity to have a good look at um, the grants and how they're allocated and whether we want to put some more thought around criteria for that um, because there's a lot of for instance there's a lot of organizations that come back to us each year and um, want grants to cover operational costs for their for their um, organization um, there's also we um, put a lot of money towards different things and it's whether the committee wants to look at how they allocate the grants whether they want to do um, a certain percentage for um, sport, um, for um, heritage stuff, for um, sort of arts and culture, um, whether, they, whether they want to put some criteria around that, around all sorts of things like that. So it's not about internal cost or efficiencies, it's about um, perhaps having a, a, um, a think about um, how we do allocate our grants, because it is a limited pool of funds and um, we, it's just a really good review of that. I think it's quite timely to do that. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Karen. Karen. And just in terms of uh, efficiencies through uh, separating out the processes, um, my understanding is that quite a lot of the, um, the hearings uh, were diverted to actual consideration of grants rather than looking at the, the, the consultation on the, on the annual plan. And as you know, there's been um, a lot of response to uh, this current consultation uh, and um, I can't imagine how difficult it was, would be to, um, to try and have hearings that covered both that and grants uh, this time around. Um, and, it, and I think the feeling is that it, it can be quite distracting for both processes and both processes um, we should be able to have the focus on those. Thank you Karen. So Councillor Vickery. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes, we'll let you know if you can. I've changed audio systems. Now, look, I, I, I totally get the point of this. Um, and only once been through the annual plan process, I found that the uh, the vast bulk of it, were, of time anyway, was taken up uh, considering the um, 
myriad grants that were and applications that had come in. It is quite time consuming and really it's only one item block on the on the annual plan budget. Um, I think about 250,000 was granted out uh, last year and this, this annual plan will have a chance to um, set a total budget and then consider uh, in a different, different forum exactly who gets what of that, that, that vote. I get that. Um, I, I found that the eligibility criteria in the, uh, in the policy a little bit ambiguous, and I'd like to see that tightened up, but that's a, a discussion for another day, including uh, our district applicants who are all also applying to other councils. We'd like to know exactly what they're asking of the other councils too, so that we don't end up shouldering the, the, the lion's share of funding for something that other councils don't support. Um, Thank you. That's, uh, that's also a concern of mine. I know Alex has got a concern. It's a uh, potential lot of double dipping across all three councils. So, um, uh, so uh, Councillor Jepson, you wanted to talk? No, no. no I'll, 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 I've done uh, my bit. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go through the two yeah, Sorry. Sorry, Lee. Um, Alex is waving. Sorry, these three of us are now little, in our little bubble here. <laughs> okay. Hello, Alex. I'll Hello, you Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Uh, the, the, well, I've got one question for clarification because it's been mentioned a number of times. So I just need to check that it's correct. It is our seventy percent. I've heard that seventy percent of our funding applications are the same every year or thereabouts. Can um, uh, either Karen or, or Katrina confirm that we have, uh, that the majority of our grants are, um, are regular, similar uh, granting? And could you also comment on the, whether or not this, um, uh, whether I feel, is, so is that correct? It is. So therefore we actually only have discretion for new funding uh, if we continue to fund those 70% of only 30% of our fund. And so I think, if we do look at this from a different angle to ensure that we are nimble and able to look at new opportunities or new needs that are coming up, otherwise it just becomes a, um, why do we even have a grant process at all? All the money is going to the same people all the time. So. Thank you. Uh, so Karen, would you like to make a comment there? Yes, we, we have identified that as a, as a key area that might, we might want to reconsider. Um, another particular issue that we, um, we found was around the grants actually supporting people's employment, um, which takes the grants into quite a different um, sphere, really, um, and um, you know, not, not usually in the, in the form of what we would traditionally think of as a grant. It's actually you know, supporting someone um, in employment. So, um, yeah, there are a number of areas that we do need to get onto, which is why we we recognised early on that we just needed to separate this process from the from the actual process. And uh, when we were reviewing the criteria, that would all come into that, including the percentage who are new applicants versus repeat applicants. So, um, thank you very much. So, Kit, is that, would you go have any comments on this? No, that sounds all pretty logical to me. Um, nothing, nothing at all. I think uh, Councillor Collins only wanted. Oh, um, pipe down, boss. I'm running the show. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Collins, <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Um, just, uh, I think that um, the separation of the grants from the annual plan submissions is really great. I think both will get. Um, the input that they deserve by having them as separate. Um, I also think in the policy, um, because when we do the long-term plan year, when we look at grants, we sometimes um, allocate funding for the three-year term to some organisation so they don't have to come back in the annual plan. And I think that needs to be clarified in the policy if we're going to continue with that um, 
that type of thing because that reduces the amount, as Alex said, that, um, that we can actually use for the rest of the grant. Um, so I think that's better. In the actual policy itself on page 47 at the bottom of um, section three, allocated decisions, which is, whoops, I haven't got the stellar page up. Sorry, people, hold on. Um, yeah. So it's on page two. Um, the, the bottom paragraph says applications for funding outside of this process and budget allocation will not be received by the subcommittee or other committees. Council may receive applications for funding of an urgent nature or where exceptional circumstances apply on the approval of the Mayor and Chief Executive. So you're saying there that we've got an allocation of money that the subcommittee are going to, to allocate money to, but people can apply outside and Council can approve extra spending on a grants nature. And I don't think that's right. I think if somebody applies side and the mayor and the chief executive think that that's a valid application that should come back to the subcommittee for their input and approval before it goes to council for um, saying that they approve or disapprove for unallocated spending. Well, just for <coughs> just pro I know it prolongs the, the, the process but um, I think it's valid because then you're having the same people comparing applications on on the same basis. And then on the next page over, which is point five point five, which is the process, um, applicants will not be invited to speak to their application. However, an applicant may be contacted prior to the meeting by council officers or the chair of the subcommittee for purposes of clarification. I do not agree with that. I think that applicants, whether they're invited to speak by the committee or whether or subcommittee or whether they uh, put in their application that they would like to speak to their, their application, I think we need to have the the ability to hear and ask questions ourselves as, the, as whoever's on that subcommittee, because otherwise, if council officers and only the chair are going to speak to them, sometimes you don't get to pick up on what they're trying to say and you need to have an expansion of that. So I don't know what other people think or what Karen would like to comment on that. I think that they were the some of the things that I thought of. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, I've got a few comments around the policy as well. Um, having had six years of dealing with applications for funding from small groups in the community, I think a lot of people are very slick at doing the applications, but some of the smaller and very worthy groups are not so good at doing that. And I'm sure Brenda's had that experience as, as others. Uh, so I would support uh, Pam's comments that I'd like to actually meet the applicants. I think in the first instance, they should be given an opportunity to uh, tick if they want to present and or not. And uh, as we've separated it out from the annual plan, I think it, we've got the time to do it. And often you can pick up on things uh, when they're a bit, often these applicants are quite nervous, but once they've sort of calmed down, uh, you can pick up on some little details that you may not have been aware of. That's not part of the formal application, and it adds real value to that conversation, I think. Um, I totally support separating uh, the process out from the annual plan, and particularly given this year's number of submissions. Um, so just, uh, I have a comment around the makeup of the membership. Uh, I would like to see the members of FAR being on that subcommittee, and it's suggested it's a mayor and two councillors, so 
that would currently give us uh, Ross and Garrick uh, from Featherston was covered, Martinborough is covered with GP and uh, Pam, and we just need one further Greytown councillor to come on that committee. I don't, uh, I have real concerns about extra, extraordinary or emergency allocation of grants because of the budgetary implications. Um, I think a lot of thought needs to go into that. I, I don't agree with it actually at all. So, so I don't know whether we're in a position you might be able to comment Katrina and Karen with making some of these small changes, whether we're in a position to actually approve this uh, document or whether it needs to come back again after the changes have made. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, if I can first respond to some of the comments and give some explanation of why we uh, officers pro um, proposed some of the changes there. Um, so first, the emergency situation. Um, we wanted to be able to um, not fetter council's decision making within a policy and very, very strictly control any allocation of funding um, just to the to the grants process. We recognise for example with the um, the rugby and bowls club um, that they wouldn't have been able to apply for any grant funding if we did limit it in that way um, we recognize that there are circumstances when uh, it might be appropriate to um, to go outside of this grant process so we wanted to be able to give that ability but to um, uh, limit it in such a way that uh, it would have to be a very um, extenuating circumstance and of an urgent nature for it not to be considered through the usual grants process. Um, so the balance was there that it would have to be the, the Mayor and uh, the CE to give some consideration to that. Um, and similarly, the, um, the recommendation that it went straight to council was because we are anticipating it being of an urgent nature that, um, as, as Pam uh, alluded to, that it, it would um, lengthen out the process. Um, the committee members, of course, would be part of the council. Um, and so you would be able to provide your, um, your expert advice to other council members from the process that you've been through on the subcommittee uh, for, for allocating grants. So that was the reason for the proposal there. Um, we took the, um, the potential opposite view. Uh, I appreciate that you, um, when uh, people go to the hearings and, and present their, um, their application in person, it is an opportunity for you to provide, um, to, to ask for more questions. Um, we felt that applications should be able to stand on their own merit. Um, and that we wanted to encourage people to provide as, as robust and thorough information so that uh, we uh, officers could first vet them for uh, consistency and meeting the criteria um, prior to that going to the committee, but having that ability to, to actually go back and, uh, and ask questions. Um, I, th that I understood that there has been some feeling in the past that um, if you are good at public speaking um, and you are very persuasive, then you may be preferenced over people who are not quite as persuasive. And so the, uh, the ability to actually um, present your, uh, your application already does cut both ways. Um, but I completely take um, your points of view uh, that it may be on, on balance uh, uh, preference to do it that way, to actually have people uh, coming and talking to you. Um, I think that was um, that was the points that you raised. Have I missed anything? I think that that was and just the makeup of the committee. Karen was the other. Uh, yes, I think I, I think the makeup of the committee for the policy is 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 as suggested is fine. So it would just need a word change so that it rather than just say two councillors, it would have to say members of the FAR committee. Yep. Um, and one extra person seconded on, or extra people seconded on as needed, but the base would be the FAR uh, committee members. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sorry. we can make that change. Uh, yeah. Oh, you worship? There we go. Thank you. Uh, if I could also uh, comment on a couple of those. I think the ability for uh, us to make urgent funding decisions, I'd hate to see a worthy cause that occurs uh, be not funded because of a, a, a level of bureaucracy that doesn't allow, again, nimbleness 
or the ability to react to a situation. And I think, uh, as uh, Karen has indicated, it, it, it has shown to work with the uh, rugby club rooms, and, and I don't think we need to probably fix what's broken if we come up with an issue where it's not being applied correctly, we can then look at those terms again in the future. Uh, and with regards to public participation, yes, I can see Karen's point, but I also uh, would probably concur with Lee and Pam that uh, it's not only a grants process, but it's also a very public facing community process that we go through. And I think uh, apart from an administrative perspective, there's also a social part to them being able to uh, put forward their views. Generally, from what I've seen, some of the bigger organisations that are funding every year don't even turn up. Uh, and especially if they're, if they're requesting funding from six or seven different organisations through the Wairarapa. Uh, but certainly, I, th I, I would support the ability for them to come and talk to the council. We're not silly. Uh, and we uh, and we can take comments, uh, you know, and winnow them out if we think they're too slick. <laughs> so I would support uh, public participation. Thank you, Alex. Um, the other thing, Karen, around that is uh, sometimes with these small groups, they are very passionate about their causes, and even though they might normally be very quiet and a bit timid, um, they generally quite passionate. So. Um, I, and I think I agree with Alex that it's actually quite a good interface between us with our community, community groups. It's a, a good opportunity. Uh, so I'd strongly suggest that change. Um, so just in terms of where we're at now, are we able to approve this report with subject to these changes? Uh, Ross? And um, we are. We're, not quite we're having trouble hearing, Ross. I agree with Karen's point that time is uh, of the essence because we have in train already. We would like to separate the train. You can't hear you, Ross. So if I get what Ross is saying is that time is off the essence. So with the approval of uh, the members of FAR, um, if I just go down to uh, section 2.35, if I've picked up on what everybody's saying, uh, where it says the policy does permit further information to be sought by council officers or the subcommittee chair, uh, do we want to retain that? Um, that doesn't impact on their speaking rights, does it? Um, it essentially means that council office could go back to seek more information. Is that correct, Karen? So we'll leave that in. Um, but uh, if we then go... If we then go to allocation decisions uh, under point three, uh, I'd like to have that included, so membership is to include the mayor and two councillors of each ward, but with a, a reference to primarily made up of members of FAR, providing you've got that balance of two from each ward. Um, and if we can make a change... So uh, we agreed that subject you know, further to what um, Karen and Alex's comments regarding urgent or exceptional funding, uh, can we tighten up that language a little bit or do you, do you think it's tight enough? Councillor Colenso, you've got a comment? Um, yes, Lee, did you say to, to leave um, point five, uh, under the process to leave point five? 5.5 the same as it is now, so that we're not inviting applicants to speak. I haven't got to that bit, no. We do want oh, them to sorry. speak. Mm, yeah, you're ahead of yourself, Pam. You. <laughs> sorry, I misheard you. Um, so can you uh, add in that word, Karen, so that it uh, members of the um, FAR 
committee. Yes, I but, can do that. Yep, okay. And then if we go down to um, point 5.5, 5, and that is under the process, so applicants will be invited to speak. Yes. Uh, and can we, do, can we just leave it as simple as that? So that's 5.5. 5. Yes, we can do that. Yep, good. Uh, Councillor Wees? Um, I think we should keep in the point where um, the applicant may be contacted prior to the, the meeting, because sometimes that's actually helpful to get a better understanding oh, yeah, no, so you can no, actually no. formulate the proper no, no, questions no, no, no. if they were to present them. Uh, does that make it a bit messy, the process? Because we, we couldn't be having individual members of the subcommittee contacting. I think... I think Karen's point about going back to make sure they've got all the right forms and they've done the right application, and then I think it, the time for us to do questions is actually at the meeting. Would Perhaps, agree? But, but, but in the past, um, being on the community board, um, I would often actually contact the person applying just for clarification because it wasn't clearly stated enough for my... Um, for, for me to actually understand what it is that they're trying to achieve. Okay, okay. I think the, uh, just again from my own experience, the community board applications are somewhat different compared to this, but Alex, have you got a comment around that? Yeah, I think uh, the point, is, I, I think it should also be retained in case there's something that, uh, that the chair or, or the um, chair or the council officers say, we would like some documentation that may not be able to be provided on the night without warning. Uh, you know, that, that is not necessarily part of the application process that they feel may be um, germane to it. So I, I, I have no problem. I think it's useful to have that here, or whether it even, or whether it's just inherently implied that we could do that anyway, whether it needs to be spelled out, I'm not sure. Hey, Karen? I think it would be... Um... My, my preference would be that anything that came from the chair would go through council officers so that officers were in control of the process. And if it is just a case of you know, providing more information to support the application, then officers um, should be doing that anyway, and just to make, to make sure that it actually meets all of the requirements. Um, so rather than the chair operating outside of that process, that, that would be my recommendation. Okay, Does, is everybody happy with that? Put your thumb up if you are. Yeah. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do uh, is to recommend to council to endorse the amendments to the grant policy. So is that sufficient for you, Karen, subject to the changes? Do we add, need to add another a line item in there, Suzanne? Is Suzanne gone? No, that's sufficient, Lee. I'll just... Um if you endorse the changes that we've discussed, I can itemise them as an action to make sure that we've captured them. Excellent. Okay, then. Thank you. So I'm going to read this out in two parts, and then I will uh, get you to unmute and uh, raise your hand and say aye. So the first bit is to recommend to council to endorse the amendments to the grant policy. So if you can all, uh, for those in favour, please say aye. 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 Very good, thank you. Uh, are those against? Please say no. I said motion carried. This next a recommendation is to recommend to Council that the grants policy is reviewed and consultation is undertaken as part of the 2021-2031 long-term plan. Can everybody unmute yourself? All of those in favour say aye. 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 Those against, please say no. So the motion is carried. Thanks Sorry, very much. excuse me, Lee. Who was the mover and seconder for that second motion? Oh, can I please have a mover for the second motion? Thank you, Councillor West. And the seconder, thank you, Cal Councillor Jepson. And, and my apologies, um, Lee. So we're going to endorse that um, rec that recommendation. So we're recommending to Council to endorse the grants policy with the changes as discussed. Can we add that bit to the end of that? Yes, thank you very much. 
And sorry, I was uh, I missed who the mover and seconder was for that motion. Then Councillor West and Councillor seconded by Councillor Jepson. Okay. So it is now 10.20 and what I'm going to propose is we have a five minute break. Um, and so I'd ask you all to turn your videos off, put your feather dusters away and go on to mute, please. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Councillor, uh, can, uh, Madam Chair, uh, if I could please uh, put my apologies, I need to go to another meeting now as well, but I'll come back as quickly as possible. Okay, okay thank you very much, Your Worship. Okay, so five minutes and we'll be back at 25 past. That goes for me too, Lee. I've got to pop away for a minute. Morning, Pammy, back again. Oh, 
watch your chat, you know, your chat line. Ah, yes. So yeah. we're still recording. We are. So. What time are we coming back? How fast? Uh, 11.25. Okay. All right. I might just, um, I'll just give you a glass of water. Yep. Okay. Thanks everybody for your patience. This is taking somewhat longer than we'd anticipated. It's all good, Lee. Good comment. Good comment around it. Uh, don't forget, Lee, we haven't had a meeting for, for a long time. That's right. So we always Which, uh, knew that yeah. this is going to take a bit longer. Mm. No, no, yeah, good, no, good stuff. Thank you. Mm. So, uh, just check your videos. Karina, can I ask, is you, uh, my, my connection's fading in and out. Is that just a Featherston thing or are you having the same problem? Um, it's a Featherston thing. It's basically the um, quality of the line getting into the, um, you're into yeah. the connection. Okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, because I see that Ross was having problems as well. Yeah. The three, the I think three, needed the, hot water. <laughs> yeah. I think Ross's problem is with his PC or his laptop, isn't it, Ross? I think the three Feathersons were all having trouble, but it just make I'm, I'm glad I'm part of the same group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, just testing all Sorry, the Garrick, I couldn't hear you. Me? Hello, You're on just, mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So just a reminder, we're still recording. So is everybody back again? Uh, Karen and Katrina. Jeffy was leaving for a moment. Yeah. Uh, right. Excellent. We're back. Okay. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks so much. Okay, so it's eleven twenty-seven. Are we able to start now again? I think we are. Not getting anything. Uh, Councillor Colenso? Did you have a comment? Did you have a comment, Councillor Colenso? <sighs> no. Okay, so I'm going to resume the meeting. Um, and the next uh, section is the Customer Satisfaction Survey 2020. Um, so uh, do I have a mover to receive the report? Sorry, uh, thank you. my video. Uh, Councillor Vickery uh, to move and seconded by Councillor Ems. Uh, Kit's having a problem with his video, which I can't rectify just at the moment. Um, so can everybody just unmute yourselves for the vote? So all in those, all in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Um, aye. Uh, all of those Pam. again. We've lost Pam. We've lost Pam. I can see Pam. So Pam, do you want to raise your hand and say aye to receive the report? Okay. What's the problem, Pam? Oh, sorry, I've got it now. Something went wrong, and I and I couldn't I couldn't hear anything that was being said. So sorry okay, if I've so missed I'll, anything. No, that's okay. So I'm going to just do that again. So have everybody unmute. So do I have a? I've got a mover and a seconder for the report. Can everybody, all in favour, please raise your hands and say aye. 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 Uh, all of those against, please raise your hand and say no. Right, the motion is carried. Um, so the second part of this is to recommend to council whether or not to proceed with the NRB survey. So uh, if it's okay with everyone, 
everyone at this moment. Uh, would you mind if I just make some commentary and then I will um, uh, take further questions or comments? So the first thing is uh, regarding the uh, current survey. I have a real problem with the NRB um, methodology. Um, if I look back to 2018, uh, they've got an even spread of ward and gender, but the, uh, their success rate in the age range is, is very poor in my view. So they were aiming for an even spread between the ages of 18 to 40, 44, 60, 45 to 64, and 65 plus. So they significantly underachieved in that area with uh, only reaching 63% of the target in the 18 to 44 year group, only reaching 65% of the target in the 45 to 64 year old group, and being 203% over in the 65. So I don't believe it, it gives us an even reach across our community. The second thing is they use uh, the white pages uh, for their database. And I personally don't know anyone, certainly in that younger age group, who even has a landline. The, they base their data on the 2018 census, where it says 63% of households have a landline. Um, now, there was a considerably considerable commentary around the flawed nature of the 2018 uh, census. Um, so I, I believe there's much smarter ways to do, um, do these types of surveys with different methodology. They've also, as part of their proposal, said that uh, we're able to benchmark with other councils. My understanding is that hasn't been done in the past and whether we would have to pay extra for that. Um, so that's on the methodology. Uh, this is costing close to 20,000. Uh, the other element to consider is whether that research would be skewed or flawed because of people's response to COVID, whether that would skew their answers. My belief is it probably would. So I'd like to thank you, Karen, for going back to the auditor or Karen and Katrina and also going to the uh, Office of the Auditor General. So essentially they were quite neutral in their response uh, or sitting on the fence, perhaps I should say. Um, so my personal recommendation, because I actually believe this would be a complete waste of $20,000. Normally when you think about surveys, it's rubbish in, you get rubbish out. And I just believe this is unsatisfactory. But I would like to recommend that we commit to a survey um, before year end. Not, sorry, not the financial year end, but before, uh, by December 2020, we'll have a completed survey. Um, so I just invite everybody to make some comments. So that's just my thinking, having done a lot of market research in the past. So, um, Councillor Ems. Yes, my query was on on the uh, on the paper when they talk about the auditor's response. Are we actually locked into that? And that's probably a question for you, Karen. When it says there that the the uh, the auditors think we should go through the whole process and then um, uh, potential impact of COVID nine may have had on the customer response. I, I'm I'm backing Lee. I think we should actually uh, hold the whole thing over until it calms down and it is as you say eighteen thousand um, dollars but uh, is that is that uh, auditor's uh, response are we bound by that um, well, well if i can first uh, just clarify my assessment of what the auditor's response is and then perhaps katrina yeah. um could uh, follow up with um what that might mean um my view is that the auditors are saying go ahead as normal um, and that if you've said in your annual um, plan that you will uh, measure these particular measures using the customer satisfaction survey then you need a really good reason um, why you haven't done that um, so i do think that they may not look favorably on the council if we didn't proceed um, katrina did you want to um, follow up 
Yes, so interestingly, we have had quite mixed messages from um, the auditors. Um, Alex, uh, Mayor Alex was um, just mentioned to me um, as he was departing to the other meeting that he's just come out of a meeting with the auditors and um, they brought this up and the auditors said to them that they, him and Harry that they were quite comfortable if we didn't go ahead with the survey and that there are there is actually at least one other council that is choosing not to go ahead with the survey. My um, my point of view is that um, eighteen thousand dollars to our council is um, a you know a reasonably um, significant amount of money, and I think if the consensus is that this report is not going to provide us with any useful data or meaningful data, then I my feeling is that it could be potentially a little bit irresponsible mm. to be committing those funds to something that we all believe is not of any, um, does not have any use or validity. Thank Can you. I just follow up? Could we get that comment in writing from the auditors? I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to not do it, but I would like something in writing just to back up that decision. That, that's my only point. Possibly, possibly, possibly not, to be honest, <laughs> yeah, um, Garrick. Um, uh, the, the auditors do like us to make our own judgments. Okay. Um, Thank if you. we, the, the worst, the, what would happen is if we did not go ahead with the report, then they would make a note in the man, in the auditing auditors management report that says we chose not to do this, and this is the this is the reasons why we didn't. Um, I think if we've got some good justification around why we're not doing it, we're not going to fail our audit by not doing mm -hmm. it. Um, they will just make it make a note because they do have to note that we haven't achieved this, we haven't done what we said we were going to do. Um, but if we've got some really good, valid sort of reasoning around it, um, then I'm not too concerned about that. Would you agree with that, Charlie? Yeah, I agree. Um, especially if we have plans to complete the, the survey within a certain amount of time, that will be the comment that they make. Um, and. Yeah, uh, we do have a responsibility to spend money prudently. So, absolutely agree, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Katrina and I had discussed this about, I mean, it will be noted in the auditor's report, but I think if we've got a clear time frame to do other market research um, within this year, I think that adds to the uh, statement around that decision. But I'll just take questions. So, Pam, I'm going to... Well, no, I'm going to mix it up, aren't I? Um, I'm going to start with, continue with Ross. Uh, can I have your comments on that, on what your thought, thoughts are? Okay. Uh, I've, I've long looked askance at these uh, survey results. The, um, uh, the somewhat vague nature of them. Um, broad statements of satisfaction in areas that are, are, are quite dated. And... Um, did consider them reliable. I take your points about the, um, the the survey methods and that they're not capturing probably uh, the younger uh, ratepayers and, and residents. And I think eighteen thousand is a huge waste of money for for something of very of, of of no data value to us and very limited compliance use. And I'd like to us to, to form a, um, a view that we can actually meet our audit requirements without it. Thank you very much. And Councillor GP? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yes, Lee, look, your concerns were raised by the last council and we, we uh, wanted to have a, a better understanding of what the ratepayers think of us. We, you know, a lot of the information we got back last time didn't reflect the feeling that was around the, the towns. So I think we definitely need to have a look at it, look at the criteria. But as Ross just indicated, if we flag that we do intend to do it before the year is out, surely uh, auditor, the auditors will look favourably at it. So look, I think we should postpone it. Okay, thank you very much. And Kat, did you have any comment around this? I think that's the council acting responsibly, actually. 
and to to not do it based on certain reasons um, is is fine. And also, if you're not getting any meaningful data out of it, then use that time to discuss with whoever might be doing it in the future of what why the questions and why the information is not coming through that is required for us to move on. So it's, I, I, I would do that. I would, I would not do it. And, but I'd use that time to make sure that the next time it's done, then it's skewed towards information that we require. The questions are skewed as opposed to the information. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's a great opportunity in other words. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, Karen. Uh, just to clarify, we wouldn't be able to carry out a survey for this financial year. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do it in time to get into this um, the uh, annual report for this financial year. So it would be going into next financial year. Yes, I appreciate that. I was meaning that we would conduct a survey within this year, not the financial year. Yeah. And I appreciate, just for clarification, that would be in next year's annual report. Uh, so Brenda, have you got um, some comments, please? No, I just uh, generally agree that um, <clears throat> I'd rather invest money on information that's useful than um, for it to go to waste like it seems to have gone. But um, yeah, I agree with what you've been saying there, Lee. Great. Okay. Thank you, Councillor West. So, Councillor Clemzo, you're last this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Um, I would I would agree um, on all the comments that have been made that, that we've got to have a benefit and, and it's got to be worthwhile. So, delaying it is, um, I think, at this point in time, is the only option we have. I do have one small question regarding this to Katrina. Um, Katrina, if um, delaying the, the report gives a basically an adverse comment on the audit report, um, if we get a number of ad adverse um, comments, at the end of a the, the auditor's report, does this then have an effect on our audit rating? Um, I just I don't quite understand how where that where it starts to affect. You know, I might have six or seven adverse comments over over the whole report. Um, where do, where does that start to have an effect on on the on the whole whole document? Um, so first of all, my apologies for looking at my phone. I was actually um, just going to be texting you and to say we're almost up to the financial report. So that's what I was doing there. <laughs> um, uh, I guess what the more comments that you have, the more adverse comments that you have in an audit report would build a story, I suppose, or a message um, to people reading the report that, that could be flagging some concerns. So if you had, you know, six or eight adverse comments, then you might go, well, something's sort of, um, sort of going wrong there. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we haven't. We've always had very, um, very clean audit reports, and we're not expecting that um, to be any different this year. Um, so look, I guess my answer, Pam, is that I don't think it will have um, an effect on our audit rating. They don't really rate us no. anymore. Um, no. They don't give us a rating. Mm -hmm. They just literally make their comments. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, Suzanne, uh, I wonder, <clears throat> Uh, if we can add a third recommendation in that we complete a survey, um, a customer satisfaction survey by December 31, 2020. Do, do you think that's useful to add that in? Um, um, yes, you, you, you should, sorry. Yes, if you want to complete a survey, you should make a recommendation to council that um, council completes a survey by December 31st, 2021, was it? No, 2020. 2020, yes. 
the, by December 1st, 31st, 2020. Yeah. Is everybody, just raise your hands if you're all happy with that. Yeah, okay, so. Okay, so I'd like to uh, go on to um, uh, the motion. Uh, if I can have a, um, somebody to, to um, nominate this, to recommend to council not to proceed with the NRB survey in 2020. Can I have someone to... Thank you, Councillor Vickery. And seconded by Councillor West. I'd like you to unmute and all in favour, please raise your hands and say aye. 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 All of those against? Um, right, the motion is... Leah, Leah I'm, I'm not um, opposed to it, um, but I think if you say that you're not going to complete the NRB survey in 2020 and then you go on to say that you're going to... Um, do another survey by the end of 2020. There's a little, there's an amb ambiguity in there. Sorry, I've got the thing, <laughs> the wording wrong. So, do we need a little bit of clarification around the actual wording of both of those recommendations? Maybe the NRB survey in the current format is not going to be completed in the 2020 year, and then the the um, and, you, and then the next recommendation sort of come along and, and be something along the lines of a new structure for a survey will be completed. Yeah, so Katrina's got a, an idea of how to word that, I think. I think we need hey, to clarify. I just, can yeah. I just say one thing that I would, um, looking at what they presented, I would not uh, be particularly happy to continue with the NRB. I think they've just been clipping the ticket, really. Uh, in 20,000 or thereabouts is a lot of money, so I'd rather keep it. It may be that they can offer us a different solution, but I don't want to limit us to using NRB. I think we should be exploring other companies who can offer a more uh, modern solution to the way in which they handle their methodology uh, so possibly so because we definitely want to maybe we say recommend to council not to proceed with the NRB survey in 2020 and then maybe the third recommendation is to um, assess uh, other market research companies um, to in order to be able to complete a survey by 31st of December, does that? Or Suzanne, have you got another suggestion? Or Katrina? All right, can I just say, I think it would be worthwhile to mention um, that we're not going to be completing the NRB survey for the current financial year. Rather um, than just 2020. June 30th of June 2020, I think that's where the clarity needs to be and that we will be completing one, if this is what you're saying, by the, by the 31st of December 2020, but it will, the information will be used in the coming, in the next financial year. Great, thanks Katrina. So Suzanne, do you want to send that on the screen so we can see that, so it's, rather than saying in 2020, it should say in this current financial year, year end to June 2020. So I've, I've sent, uh, sorry, so the current financial year. So can you have a look at that? So I can't put yeah. it onto the screen without fiddling around. So it's okay. to not recommend to council to proceed with the proposed NRB survey in the current format for the current financial year, or um, for the current yeah. financial year of June uh, 2020. Is that okay? Are you happy with that, Katrina? Karen. So, can, can we just add in reporting, the current financial reporting year? Because, of course, we would have been carrying out the survey after the end of this financial year, but still within the reporting year. Great. Thank you, Karen.
So on that on that basis, can I please have a mover for that? Thank you, Councillor Colenso. And can I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Jepson. Uh, I'd like you to unmute. All of those in favour, please raise your hand. Aye. I say aye. aye. All of those against? <laughs> right, the motion's carried. And then, uh, are you able to type up that third motion, uh, Suzanne, so that we can see it on screen and make sure you're happy with it, Katrina and Karen? Hello. Um, yeah, I'm just typing it now. It's just taking a little bit to put together. So um, if anyone wants to help with some words, feel free. So. What was the third, third motion about, Lee? So to recommend that we um, look at alternative market research companies with a view to completing a customer satisfaction survey by 31st of December, 2020. I think that's pretty perfect. Yeah. You all have happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Did you get that, Suzanne? Uh, yes, I did. So it was to recommend that we look at other market research companies with a view to completing a satisfaction survey by December, 2020. Yeah. I preferred if it said December 31st, so it's very clear. Not a problem. Uh, great. So can I have a mover for that um, third recommendation? Thank you, Councillor West. A seconder? Uh, thank you, Councillor M. So unmute your buttons and all in favour say aye. 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 Those against? So the motion's carried. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, so moving now on to agenda item C1, um, can I have a mover to receive the report? Oh, thank you, Councillor Colenso, and a seconder? Seconder, anyone? Thank you, Councillor Jepson. So unmute your buttons and all in favour say aye. 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 Those, those against, so the motion is carried. So, um, basically, we um, both, Kit uh, was very concerned about the frequency of the meetings, as was Philip Jones, who sits on another of council meetings. He's an accountant. And I also sought some guidance from local government New Zealand. Um, and they were all in agreement that quarterly was uh, certainly not enough for FAR to be meeting. Um, and the second element of it was that in any middle-sized company with a turnover of 20 million, you would most definitely be receiving the monthly reports and reviewing those uh, in a timely manner. Um, and again, this was the consensus with Kit and uh, Philip Jones and LGNZ. Um, we do have the ability as well with Zoom, not moving forward, maybe not with voting rights, but we can certainly meet to discuss the monthly reports in between our uh, FAR meetings. So that's by way of background, and I just think it, it's best practice, and uh, to only have quarterly reviews was a poor business model, in my view. Um, so, uh, just get asked for comments, and I'm going to start with Councillor West this time. <laughs> um, so the two things we're asking is approval to increase the frequency, and the second part is to receive monthly financial statements. So um, I think it's prudent, um, and mon monthly financial statements should be. Um, it's in the business world. You do. You always do a monthly financial report anyhow, so I don't see why we should be excluded from that. Um, not really much else to say about that, but I agree with you there, Lee. Great. Thank you, Brenda. Um, so, Councillor Colenso. 
Um, I'm definitely in agreement to to the recommendations, firstly, of having the, um, the meetings um, bi-monthly um, at a minimum and um, um, or at a maximum, I should say, because you could go six weekly rather than um, bi-monthly. Uh, and I certainly um, agree with having the statements coming through month, financial statements coming through monthly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Ems? Yes, I agree with, with previous speakers. My only concern would be uh, if there are any other financial considerations, but looking at the note there, we're really only, took the staff are doing this anyway, if they can just send us through the copies, but if there's no other financial considerations, then you, you've got to support it, and it may, just makes sense. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Councillor Vickery? Yes. And Kit, would you like to make a comment? Oh, that's, that's great, Lee. Look, this, this committee is the closest thing you can get to a governance um, committee in, in the equivalent of either a public body or a, or a business. And as Brenda said, you know, it's just, it's just good practice to be able to review monthly accounts and meet by monthly. And I think, you know, the public, the public would demand that if they, if they actually probably knew that, that we weren't meeting that regularly and finances weren't being reviewed on a monthly basis. So I think it's a good call. Great, thank you very much. And Jeppy, um, <clears throat> yes, we look. Oh, hang on, yep, I'm on. Hey, uh, I do. I uh, agree with both recommendations, uh, and also to add weight to what Kit just said, we do a uh, a two weekly uh, financial report at home, um, and we got. You know, you've got to be. Uh, on the button and look when i first came on the council we were getting it every three months and it was about four months late so all credit to katrina and her team that we are getting more up-to-date uh, financial reports so um yep i agree great thank you very much well i think it's uh, we've got consensus on this uh just for your information katrina and i have had a brief conversation about how we can make some of the monthly financial reports maybe a bit more relevant or user friendly, maybe the inclusion of some graphs and things. Just conscious that I don't want to unburden uh, Katrina and her team too much, but we're just having that early discussion. Um, I'm very happy to do Zoom meetings with everyone when we get the monthlies, uh, and that way we can have this sort of very useful chat. And if there's any areas that we have concern, at least allows the finance team to have early warning that we've got some uh, concerns or maybe need clarification. So can I have a mover to, I'm going to read out, can I uh, approve both these recommendations at one time, Suzanne? That's fine, Lee. That's fine, Lee. Yeah. So I'm going to read out the two recommendations. So to recommend to council to change the frequency of meeting of the FAR committee from quarterly to bi-monthly, six times a year. And number three, to recommend to council that members of the FAR committee receive monthly financial statements for review and should the need arise to hold extraordinary meetings. So can I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Councillor Kenzo, and seconded by Councillor Vickery. So please unmute your button, and all of those in favour say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All of those against? Right, the motion's carried. Thank you very much. That was very short and snappy and smart. Right. So now I'm going to go on to uh, the finance report. Is everybody happy to can continue on? You don't need a little break or anything? You all okay? So can I have a mover to receive the report, please? So Councillor Jepson and seconded by Councillor Ems. Thank you very much. So um, Katrina, um, oh no, sorry, I'm sorry, this is the... 
Yes, sure. So Katrina, do you want to make some commentary on this? Um, First of all, I'd just like to say I've just texted um, Ewan because I'd like him to uh, join uh, this part of the meeting so that he can offer more commentary around um, the situation with Wellington Water, if um, that's what you require, because he is the expert in that field. Um, so I've just texted him, so hopefully he will zoom in shortly for us. Um, so yes, this is a presentation of the reports for the nine months to the end of um, the 31st of March, 2020. Um, so um, there's not a lot to note in terms of the report for the rates arrears. It's tracking really well. We're really happy with how we're looking in terms of our rates arrears. Um, and um, we've still got a very, um, I think it's up to 39% of people on direct debit. It's really high, so we're really happy with that. Um, a small update on, I guess, the what we've seen in the last um, month around the impact of COVID-19 is that we, uh, Kirsty has not really seen a great increase in people contacting us or going on to direct debit. We've had a really quick look at the um, bank account today because uh, we're at the 21st today. So uh, the rates were due on the 20th. Um, and from first glance, it appears that um, we've got a very similar amount in uh, for this quarter that we would then we would normally get. So without doing further, we, we're going to go in and do some more um, investigation around and just have a look and see um, how we stand uh, probably at the end of the week or the beginning of next week and just see um, if we have got and who's dropped off, I guess, who usually pays that hasn't paid. And they look at whether we um, need to be proactively giving them a call and offering um, our assistance. So that's where we're at with that. So we're definitely monitoring that quite closely, but Kirsty has not seen a great um, impact for that. Um, so, so, that, so, so, so that's rates arrears. So I guess probably the best thing is to move on to the financial statement, which is probably the bit that you guys are all interested in. Um, so a high level summary, you've all got the report and I'm sure that you have all read it. And, and Lee, thank you. Yes, you're correct that Charlie and I um, do want to make a lot of changes to the style of the report and the information that is in here in the way it's presented. It's, um, and we do want to um, incorporate visual as well as words in there so that it's, it's a bit more meaningful for you all to look at. And highlighting some points that we think, in areas that we sort of think need to be tracked. Um, so the main, concerns in this report, as you would um, have all picked up, is that we are um, well over budget on our operating expenditure. There are two um, main reasons for that. Um, the first one being resourcing. Um, part of that is uh, the restructure that um, we have undertaken in the last few months. And it's just about realigning those resources and um, internally as well as externally and bringing a few new positions in. Uh, Matt, the, the also amenities has seen a bit of an over budget there, mainly around, um, it's really just around getting buildings more up to date and spending on that. Some of it, like the Payne Farm, for example, um, will be transferred to reserves at the end of the year, but it does still sit on the profit and loss account. And it does still sit as an, um, as an over budget item because it wasn't in the annual plan. So hence it's over budget. But obviously the main area of concern is with Wellington Water um, and what is happening there. Now, just to give you a, Quick, um, oh, Ewan's on board. Welcome, Ewan. Thank you for um, dialing in. Um, 
The, um, uh, the cost blowouts, I suppose, with Wellington Water have really only happened since February, so they were tracking really nicely for us, and then um, they, they hit, uh, they've hit a bit of a, um, a blip. <laughs> which is not insignificant. And that's, uh, so it's not that it's been the whole year, it's very much just been highlighted since February. Um, so I have given some commentary here around Wellington Water and I offer, um, I welcome your questions on that. Um, I've kept it, I think, to a level that is appropriate at a governance level, but we've got Ewan on board and to answer any other questions, and I'm sure he will also be reporting to Assets and Services um, about Wellington Water. <coughs> so I open up to any questions I think would be the most appropriate. Thank you so much, Katrina, and we um, really appreciate you looking at how we're doing the reporting and going forward. We don't want to overburden you with heaps more work. Um, I think if I can, if you ha agree with this, if everybody's brought up the water, so I think that we'll do that as a second part, but okay. has anybody got any comments on other elements of the budget that you want to uh, bring up, concerns, um, and then let's move on to the water part as for the second part of this whole process. Um, are you all happy to do it, manage it in that way? Yeah, great. Um, okay, so maybe uh, Ross, start with you and then followed by Councillor West. My, my apologies, folks. Uh, we've gone over time and I have another appointment uh, that's clashing, so I will have to leave at some stage in the, in the next five to ten minutes. So actually, maybe uh, Ross, if we, if I can take a note of concerns that you may have, and we'll focus on you just for the moment. Okay, thank you. So sorry to barge in Hello. there. Look, now my, my my what caught my eye were the Wellington Water and City Care overruns. Um, okay, City Care in both cases was an, an issue of unbilled expenditure, at the un, unbilled items at the end of a contract. Um, I take it that we weren't expecting these. Um, first question is, is were, were these ex expected? Were they, um, were they adequately tagged to work done and work commissioned? And my other point is about Wellington Water, I understand that much of this extra expenditure was due to systems failures, um, breakages, um, remedial action, and, and also water purity issues and some speedy work that was needed to be done to assess that and to rectify it. So um, firstly, and, and maybe the second part is for, for you, and, but uh, I'll leave it there. But the, the city care bit, Katrina? Oh, sorry. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, and so, and in, in, I guess there's, there's a few parts here. Yes, all, all the extra work that was billed, we absolutely went through and audited that and made sure that um, Lawrence Stevenson did a big piece of work and all the water guys making sure that all of that work that they were billing was correct and justified. Um, Unfortunately, what didn't happen in the past was that there was no accrual done at year end for work in progress. And so effectively, this is the work in progress. So yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, the answer is yes, we should have known that it was there. We didn't take account of it. Um, and I apologize for that. Um, so that's how, that, that is how it's occurred, unfortunately. Does that, yeah, does that explain that for you? So thank you, Katrina. So uh, probably that's a common question with everyone, um, but Ewan, would you like to just um, help uh, Councillor Vickery out with his questions around uh, the blowouts with water, Wellington water? Sorry, we yeah, jumped sure. around a bit, but I think it's really important <laughs> that Councillor Vickery hears all this before he has to leave. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and thank you for, for welcoming me. Um, 
Yes, I think um, uh, Councillor Vickery is absolutely right that um, really a lot of the um, increase around Wellington water is based on some of the, the breakages and, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of the water quality issues that, that we've had. Um, and I guess that's, that's the key point really. We were working on a budget this time last year um, and Wellington Water have undertaken quite a, an extensive programme of work to improve what we have. Um, and that's things like um, in, increased sampling and testing. They've done more investigation type work. Um, so, sorry, I'll just start my video. Um, and so um, if, if you look at the breakdown of work that they've done, actually a lot of the OPEX overspend is around um, things to really improve um, what we have in terms of uh, testing and sampling regimes and um, investigations. There's also quite a lot of um, legacy stuff in there. So um, under the previous regime, we, for example, we didn't have um, operating and maintenance manuals at some of the wastewater plants. So actually we've had to develop a lot of that stuff from scratch. Um, th there's an awful lot that we've had to pick up in terms of an improved um, quality of management that we're getting under Wellington Water um, that, that maybe wasn't there in the past. And that's where some of the OPEX spend sits as well. Great, thanks, Ewan. Um, does that, uh, it's a bit of a uh, once over lightly, but does that uh, assist you, uh, Ross? Extra detail there, uh, Ewan. It's, um, uh, I was aware of the manuals. Uh, I'd forgotten about that before. Um, work that absolutely had to be done. So I should, I should also say, um, I've asked Wellington Water to compile a, a detailed report for the next Assets and Services Committee meeting in the middle of June to outline the progress made around water quality and also develop the, a similar programme of work around wastewater, which was agreed following the, the overflow at Marlborough. So they'll be presented at the next Assets and Services Committee meeting. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm just going to go around the room uh, in the first instance, uh, if there's any other non-watery questions you've got, and then let's switch to uh, focus on Wellington Water. Well, well or, or you and would it be more convenient for you if we deal with the water issues as you're in here, and that then frees you up to go elsewhere? That would be very kind. I do have a 12.30. That would be really oh. good. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Then. So uh, let's just re rejig that. So I'm just going to go around and ask if you've got specific questions from, for Ewan that helps us understand this budget blowout. Um, so, JP. Oh, <clears throat> hang on. Uh, thank you, Lee. Well, Look, um, <clears throat> I, I've been talking to Ewan uh, regularly as Chair of Assets and Services. But it actually reinforces what I said earlier on, that um, when we're doing repairs and maintenance, and while we've got the ground open, we see things, or the, the team see things that need renewing and, and improving, it's the time to do it. And I think <clears throat> um, you and you'll agree with me that um, there's a bit of a, the unknown when you dig up the ground and, and have a look at some of the... Uh, assets we've got there. So, um, yeah, look, I, I um, accept uh, Ewan's um, discussion on it, and I, I, I think that, you know, Wellington Water are doing a good job, but it's going to be costly because, you know, everyone wants to us, uh, to us to improve our services, and water is definitely one of them. And there is a bit of legacy work, as um, Ewan said. So, no, no. I think you're doing the right thing, Ewan, and thank you. I think, um, if I may, just, just one of the other points to, to add to that, we've also had um, quite a few jobs in some rather <laughs> busy streets, unfortunately. So um, in Fitzherbert Street in, in Featherston, we've had a couple of issues there. And of course, any time you do some work on the state highway, the costs are significantly higher. Um, so that's posed a bit of a challenge through, through the last couple of months as well. Great, thanks, Ewan. Um, so, uh, Councillor Ems, if you'd like to. Yes, if I may, Ewan, I, um, reinforcing what you've said, and I agree, but if you go through the accounts, it's actually, you, you've, in, you've inherited more than Wellington Water. We've got the, the overflow and the ongoing um, 
expenses from CityCare, which go back, uh, I'm assuming, to the previous uh, contract arrangements which they had. Um, and there's no, there's no, re I mean, okay, there's an end to that now, but, you know, there's a considerable amount of money which you've inherited from that CityCare operation. Um, the CityCare was also, and I'm assuming the, uh, the review of the Luther report, looking at the whole water situation in, in Martinborough, um, is that being taken over as part of the Wellington water operation now? Because I think they've once again they've inherited problems which have been around for some time, and you are now in a position to actually have to go back and redo these. So the, these unbudgeted um, expenditures have been going on for maybe eighteen months. Would that be right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, one of the, the challenges, and Katrina's already touched on it as well, is that some of the expense, some of the cost have just kind of landed all at the same time. Um, if you think back, uh, Wellington Water started work for us on the 1st of October, by the time they understood everything and did some of the work, the, the, all the costs have landed at once. Um, absolutely, there, there are some legacy issues that we're still um, grappling with, um, and we're, we're making some really good progress, but you're absolutely right, we still have legacy issues to resolve. Mm. Uh, where are we up to with the manuals? Are we, do we have we actually restructured or reprinted or reconstituted or did we inherit some from CityCare? We inherited some procedures but there was no uh, I guess single manual single document there that was easily accessible and, and readily accessible for the operators to use. Um, I'm, I'm led to believe that the, there's wastewater treatment and water treatment manuals now available and um, they were done as a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, Councillor West, did you have any particular comments around watery issues? Um, um, so, I understand that we're over budget. So, where are we getting the money from and what are we sacrificing in order to get that budget across the line? Uh, Sorry. Katrina, you're, you're still... Sorry. There we Don't go. Do it the manual way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so we're over budget um, with regards to the water. Where are we getting the money from to pay for all this? What are we sacrificing? What areas are we um, having to dip into to pay for it? So um, the short answer to that is it comes out of cash flow. Um, which means it comes out of public equity. So I've spoken to the auditors about this um, and what the options are for um, overspends with councils to, to sort of, you know, reasonably material um, overspends. And the auditors have advised me that, well, the auditors have said most councils carry, um, do not, um, sorry, the, the auditors have said that um, councils absorb that funds, absorb those cost overruns into um, and pay for it out of equity, um, and hence cash flow. So what it means is that we will have less money to invest, slightly less income that we can get from um, our investments and our term deposits. Does that answer your question, Brenda, or do you want further detail? Sorry, Brenda, you're on mute. Yes, it does answer my question. So um, it just means that we may not be able to do certain things. Is that how I understand it? No. Uh, yes and no. So, so um, definitely going forward, we have to be mindful of um, cost overruns because they they do impact straight at the cash flow situation. So, so cash flow is something that we should not take our eye off the ball on because it's it's very important that we can um, it, it allows us to operate. Um, and um, so part of the long-term plan will be planning um, for um, and, and having a look to see the impacts on cash flow of all the projects that we have in the pipeline, the ones that we're currently doing. Um, yeah, so, so, so definitely, Brenda, um, what I'm trying to say is that we, are, we have to be very aware of cost overruns and not take them too lightly because they do affect our operating capacity. Um, and we have to plan for the 
plan in the future. And so, so when we're doing the annual plan and the long-term plans, this is all built in and we can see the impact long-term of the decisions that we're making. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. So I've just got a couple of brief questions for you because I'm just mindful of you and having to be at his next meeting at 12.30 and then I'll get Pam and then uh, Kit to comment. So um, thanks so much for being with us to answer these questions, Ewan. And I think the manuals, it's great that we've now sort of got them under the way. I, I'd forgotten about the costs associated with them. Just in terms of the work done so far at Memorial Park in Greytown, are you anticipating those costs will show up uh, by June, you know, by year end? Yeah, so some of those costs are already there. Um, so uh, a lot of the commissioning costs for it and the testing and sampling that needs to be done, some of those are already there and there's still a, a few more to appear through, yeah. Have you got any sort of feeling for how much more is going to be required for spend to finish that job? Uh, I, I don't off the top of my head, um, but um, I, I can certainly find out if, if required. Just if it's a, um, so, you know, a really large amount. Um, and just thinking about next year's budget, so how are you seeing that tracking? Are you going to be uh, increasing the budget for next year substantially based on these? Or do you think this is a bit of a blip that we can then, what do you think the impact's going to be? I'm talking about the 2021 budget. Yeah, so, so there will be some uh, cost that will continue at that high level. For example, where we've um, implemented or put in place uh, better and uh, more infrastructure, for example, UV treatment. Um, of course, we'll need to um, manage and maintain that equipment as well, um, and also maintain, say, critical spares uh, for that equipment. So there will be a, a slight op OPEX increase for those, but I think that's already built into the Wellington Water figures. Yes, yeah. I, I was going to say, um, um, Lee, you and I have worked um, with um, Wellington Water and continue to work with them to ensure that we have enough um, OPEX in our budget for next year. Um, but um, we're pretty confident that we're, we're at um, that what we've got built into our annual plan is sufficient. Would you agree, Ewan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, thank you very much. And I've just got one other question. Um, and I really appreciate all the detail you supplied. We're not trying to micromanage, but it was just to get an understanding of, you know, a big number like that. Um, so uh, we are, we were looking at a governance level, it's just to get a good understanding. Um, so just in terms of the cost of the new wastewater application, is that going to be sitting in the 2021 budget? Uh, have you, what's the situation there? Because that'll be come out of water, won't it? Yeah, so um, Wellington Water will be taking over the um, consent application for the Featherstone Wastewater Treatment Plant. I believe there is still some money um, there for the remainder of this year, Katrina. Um, and there's money allocated for next year for that management as well, I believe. Correct. Sorry, I was going to say yes. Do you think that's sufficient? The money that's been allocated? Uh, the indication from Wellington Water is that yes, it is. Great, okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, we've got seven more minutes, so over to Pam. I'll just let Pam talk first, Brenda, if you wouldn't mind, because she hasn't had a chance yet. Off you go, Pam. Thank you, Lee. Um, you and, um, yeah, I, you've gathered from all of us that we're not happy with the cost overruns because they, they haven't um, been reported earlier and that we, we, we're now dealing with them. Um, and I thank you for the commentary that you've given us around, around those so that we can see where that, that has actually happened. My, my concerns are going forward. When, when we first started with Wellington Water, my understanding was that we gave Wellington Water a budget and they had to work within that budget. Yes, I understand we've had some issues around the extra work that has needed to be provided, but because of the condition of our pipes and the standards for our water going forward that we have to meet in all three sectors of the water, 
I, I'd like to see, and I don't know how to do this, but I'd like to see Wellington Water's budget sit in there of what they've got to spend on the three waters. But I would like to see that we have in that budget um, extra money allocated to unexpected projects. And before that unexpected projects money is used, that that comes back to far to be approved to come out of that money. So, so that we've actually budgeted because we know we will have some emergencies within the next 12 months and so we're not taking that money basically out of our cash flow which impacts on so much else within the organisation so just have us think outside the square as to how how we do that because yeah we just uh, absolutely so so there is uh, um, there's a pool of money there for reactive works mm -hmm. um, where we can actually sort of dip into stuff. I guess um, we need to strike the balance between um, letting well and water do what is necessary mm -hmm. um, and do what is right within certain bounds. Yeah. Um, and um, I guess the difference between operations and governance around it. I think what I would like to see is um, providing better and earlier reporting and projections around things. Right. Maybe that's where we need to sit rather than looking at authorizing works because of course we'd have to delay the work until it's approved and we just need to strike the balance between being able to react appropriately at an operational level um, but also given proper oversight at a governance level. So we just need to, I guess I'd just urge a, a balance between the two. Okay, yeah, but, yeah, I understand that. Well, in that case, then in the financial account, we've got a column for a full year budget. What about a column there that says a full year anticipated result or a, or what the full year is, is supposed to be so that we can actually see where we're at and then anything that is allocated a is needed above what Wellington Water's budget is because they know what their budget is and what they've got to work for, then that has to come back to far to 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 get some clarity around that. Mm. Sorry, I was gonna say look I think that sits within the delegations as well, Pam. Yeah. Um and the delegations policy because um Wellington Water do need to be able to operate and we don't want to, at a, I think as a FAR group um, and um, at a governance level, we need to make sure that we are allowing them to do that, but also that we have the mechanisms and the processes in place to ensure that, as you and said, they are highlighting to us that um, what is happening, and that will go through assets and services, um, and um, then come back to us in finance so that we can report to you um, what is happening and what is likely to happen. So I understand what you're saying, that we don't want them to continue going over budget, I think is what you're probably hmm. um, wanting to see if we can um, tighten up on. And I agree with you, and, and I think that's that's probably more around, and you and correct me if I'm wrong, about around putting good processes in place for Wellington Water. Yeah, and I think it's probably worth touching on, um, uh, as, as Katrina's already uh, touched on, we've um, got this all at once um, and earlier in the year. Um, so we've already started, we've already changed the reporting process with Wellington Water and the visibility and projections that we have with them. Um, so it's an improvement we've, we've already made and we can um, look to build on that as we go forward. Okay, yeah, but I also, also want to make sure that there's money set aside if there is an emergency that... Um, that we, we can use without using cash flow. Yes, um, so one of the issues with our previous budgets was that there was no contingency built into them. Yeah. And um, Wellington Water don't operate like that. They um, have built contingencies into um, their budgets. Time will tell whether you know an extraordinary event occurs and they have to, um, you know, and that's not sufficient. But um, they've set their plan is that they have built enough contingency in. Okay, cool. 
Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ewan, but I understand that under city care management, they didn't carry spare parts, which was a real problem, uh, you know, if there was an emergency. Am I correct in thinking that? Um, I believe they, they will carry some. Um, I wasn't around um, then, but um, they would have carried some. What we have found is that some of those spares were run down towards the end of the contract, and we actually had to, to replace those and other critical spares as well. Yeah. Okay, um, so you've got one minute before your next meeting. Sorry, Kit, I'm not meaning to cut you off, but uh, have you got any comments uh, while Ewan's here around the water area? Ewan, nice to meet you. How are you? Um, look, I, I, I get it as far as the, the light at the end of the tunnel with, with Wellington Water and it's you've inherited stuff and there's a lot going on now and, and there's plans for the way the way, the way to let them work um, for you, for council, for, for, for the asset guys, whatever it might be. But, and that's fine. And that's the way it should be. Let them get on. But with the information that we've got in front of us right now and the, the budget overruns, um, the, the, percentage of, uh, the percentage of the Wellington water overruns against the operating expenditure for the end of March, as at the end of March, is, is significant. It's a big percentage. And for that, I think that we as a, as a committee have got to recognise that this Wellington water situation at the moment is a risk. And it's a risk that we will get out of, but right at this moment, we've, we've got to recognise that it's a risk and we should be getting some form of agenda point every time we meet and, and we'll notes and, and notes to the accounts on the processes that are going to get us out of it. And it's if, if we don't recognise it at the moment, that it's a risk, then we're, we're virtually ignoring the financial information that comes out on a monthly basis. And we can't afford to do that. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a melting pot, if you like. Get the processes in place that allow Wellington Water to do what they've been contracted to do um, and get on with it, but control and identify and explain and report the processes that are going on to do it. And, and I, th I don't think we could ask for too much more than that. Um, that satisfies the governance, it satisfies the operations. It, it's, it's, we've got to just make sure that the cost overruns are brought back into, into line eventually. And if they're not, then the risk continues. And I, th I just say again, I think we, sh we should be identifying this right at this moment as a, as a major risk to the council. And uh -huh. one that we will fix, and it will be fixed, but I think that's a responsible way to operate right now. Absolutely, and I, I agree entirely. Um, and that, that's where Trina and I have been um, working with Wellington Water to improve the visibility earlier so we can give visibility to governance at an earlier stage. Yeah, very important. Katrina, what do you think? Sorry, was that me? Uh, I, I totally agree. I think we, um, yeah, you know, this, this did all hit at once. Um, so it was, it was almost a perfect storm because it happened in February and then we went straight into lockdown. And, and so that, without that being an excuse, um, we now have to um, ensure that we've got the right processes in place. Yes, it is a, definitely a risk to council, and we do need to note it, and we do need to put um, processes in place to mitigate that risk and to ensure that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and we are actually getting to that point. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you, Kit. Um, have you got time for that last question from Brenda, or Brenda, is everything you wanted answered now? You're all okay? Um, Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in and going into such detail for us, Ewan. So thank you. We, re we release you. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too bad a grilling. <laughs> thank you very much thank you. for all of us on the team. Cheers. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Ewan. Uh, so, okay, so just going back. Uh, are there other issues? The um, and so. GP has to leave the meeting. Do you have to go right now, GP, or have you got five minutes? I've got five minutes. 
Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll put the spotlight on you. So if you, is there any other areas of concern or questions you've got for Katrina before you leave? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, Ewan has uh, discussed the big issue that um, has been of concern and we've all talked about it. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going other than that, of course, but we can't, we've got to live with that. But Katrina, um, yes, I'm, yep, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the level of commentary you're putting around things now, which is great. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Jibby. Hey, just before you go, uh, I failed to actually say the motion is carried for this discussion. So uh, is that all you need me to say, uh, Suzanne, or do we need another vote on that one? No, that's all we need to say. So we had um, Councillor Jefferson and Councillor Ems as the, the mover and the seconder. So I'd just like okay. to put the motion in. Okay, so I'll just uh, say the motion is carried. Is that all you need me to do? I'll just just um, ask for the put vote. The vote. Yep. Oh, again, the okay. Vote. So, um, so uh, all of those in favour, raise your hands and say aye and unmute. Aye. Aye. Those aye. against, say no. So the motion is carried. Thank you. Sorry for that omission on my part. Um, Okay, so um, Brenda, have you got any other questions of a non-watery nature? Yeah, sure. Regarding the yeah, with regards to kind of like direct debits, what's the possibility for people to be able to pay through automatic payments? I think I brought this up at a council meeting and I was referred to actually bring this up at the FAR meeting. Um, oh. What are your comments around that, Katrina? Um, people are more than welcome to have automatic payments if they prefer that to a direct debit. And we have a, um, a lot of people that do choose um, to use automatic payment um, instead of direct debit. The difference between um, the two is that the onus is more on the person paying the automatic payment because they are, I guess for want of a better word, the instigator of the payment to ensure that they are paying us the right amount of money. So all going well, someone sets up an automatic payment and um, they never get behind, so they never get penalties. We do have a few issues with that, um, with people forgetting to adjust the automatic payment amount and then penalties start sort of creeping in. Um, but um, we went through that. But in answer to your question, people are more than welcome to pay by automatic payment or direct debit. Cool. Are you Thank happy you. with that, Brenda? Yep. Any Absolutely. other questions we've got? No. Okay. So oh, uh, except on. for, um, thank you very much. I know we've given you a bit of a grilling, but oh, um, it's it's been really good. <laughs> that's fine. <Thank> you. <laughs> got broad shoulders. That's <laughs> no, fine. So, uh, Kit, just going on to you, um, are there any other non-water related aspects that you or comments you want to make about the report? Um, the, the water um, is, is by far the biggest. And then the notes on the restructuring and the realignment and the overruns there, I think I think they are all fine. I think that's that comes to the territory with a new CEO and a new and a restructure. Um, and I think that will be worked through um, quite well. Um, the just there's loss on sale of assets of eighty nine thousand dollars. What's what's that? Sorry, repeat that question. Loss on sale of assets. Loss on sale of assets. Right. Okay, that is um, the uh, Tararua Junction in um, Greytown. So what happened there was um, it was revalued. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, and it was revalued to $1.5 million, which was the sale and purchase price. And so in between that time, we have incurred a lot of expenses to ensure that the sale and purchase could go through because there's been a lot of um, legal issues with ownership of parts of the land, parts of the roading, um, and effectively that's what it is legal costs to um, get the get the um, get the land to a position where it was the sale and purchase could go through 
Okay, so that, that gets recorded as a loss in sale, fine. Yes, correct. Okay, yeah. right, that, that's all. Thank you. Good notes, by the way. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Kat, there was one other comment you made. Uh, if you look at uh, page 78, was there another column that you thought would be useful? Okay. Oh, just, that, that, was, that was the, um, I think Pam actually mentioned it as well. It, it would be nice to see uh, after the full year budget in the summary. Um, Sorry, we're in a meeting. Oh, I'm just going through. Okay. Is, is there another way in? Is it? No, 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 you can go there. Oh, <laughs> um, in, the, in, the, in the financial performance. So uh, we have the actual budget and variance for the month, full year yes. budget. Yep. It would be nice to have a rolling forecast after that as well, as at the end of the financial year. Possible? It's deferring to my senior financial accountant. Um, well, it just tells us at a glance. Maybe, the theory is fine. Maybe just take notes. Yeah. Maybe we just have to take take get notes of the trainer. Yeah. We would have to get information from each of the, the areas to make sure that their current spending plans were not, what, whether they were planning to be under or over budget sort of thing. It's not impossible, but it might take some time to get up and running. Could it be a quarterly sort of update? Could be a quarterly to start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that we can work towards, Kat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's nothing so, to prevent that from happening. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Pam, um, have you got any comments outside of the water areas? Uh, yes, I have. Um, and probably it's directed to Katrina. Sorry, Katrina. <laughs> the extra claim from City Care under the water really worries me because in roading, um, in other areas, we use contracts and there is the, the possibility that in some other areas other than water, we could end up with the same situation of unbuilt um, work in progress at, at the end of a contract. I agree. Um, I'm not sure how we get advance warning of where people are sitting or where the costs are sitting with regard to a contract. Um, but there has to be some mechanism in there that the guys are looking at the billing as well as where they are in the budget so that it highlights to them that, that there is still work that's being done that hasn't been filled. That it has to be some mechanism in there so that we don't end up with this situation for other areas as well, and all the water again. <laughs> yes, yes, you're you're absolutely right. Um, and what the process that we are, will be putting in place um, this year, what we've already put in place, is to ensure that we contact um, all of our. Um, people who have contracts with us at the end of the year to ensure that we are capturing any work in progress um, that may be in the pipeline that they haven't yet billed us for, but they have actually undertaken the work. Um, so I think that will, that will address that. Fantastic. And then you, if there is such a thing as, as a difference in that, you will report that in either the monthly or the quarterly um, financial, or monthly financial. Yes, so we do have to get do a little bit, the reason I'm a little bit cautious is we would definitely do that for year end. Yeah. Um, quarterly um, would be something that we could do. We would need to um, have some discussions with the managers about for the larger contracts. We're talking really just the roading. Um, the roading's the big one, I guess, and um, any of the amenities ones are generally a lot smaller, um, and water is the other one. So, so yes, we can certainly um, see if we can do some accruals um, that are more on a quarterly basis going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We get no surprises then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
Thank I agree, you very much. I agree. And Ginny and I were both very um, surprised <laughs> as well with, with City Care. We, we were expecting a little bit that was still sitting around because it's always the case. Um, but um, we were, yeah. And, yeah. and as I've said to Lee, um, we, I, I got the, um, Lawrence and Brandon have both spent quite a few hours, a number of hours, reconciling that um, that stuff that was in the pipeline um, to ensure that it was accurate. So that work has been done on that. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I should have shared that everyone. I um, omitted to do that, but I did question Katrina about that, and she assured me that they'd uh, done a very deep scrutiny line by line item on that. Um, so uh, I think as everybody's had an opportunity to speak, uh, Garrick, you want to make another comment? Yeah, just one nitpicky thing about the interest rate on the 19 million is um, three and a bit. Is that is that fluctuating at the moment or where are we up to? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, yes, it is. Um, the short-term interest rates, anything under, under sort of 30 days is just almost not worth even putting it on term deposit at the moment because it's, it's, so, it's so low. We've got... Um, I mean, I, I, I guess my concern is a lot of it, all of our term, none of our term deposits, excuse me, um, are for a period of longer than a year. So we, which is, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, and so we, we've always got a rolling, our term deposits are always rolling over, but of course now that those ones that we're getting 4% are rolling over and we're down to sort of um, the three and a half even into the 2%, it is, um, it is coming down, that average interest rate is coming down and we'll continue to do that over the next year or so. Yeah. And this borrowing, the, in the borrowing we do, what are we looking at on that at the moment? One, one, 1. 1.9, 2? Uh, 1. 1.5, 1. 1.7. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's um, you know it's quite it's favourable, very favourable, um, mm. and generally speaking, we term deposit rates are generally higher than our borrowing rate. However, auditors do not encourage us to borrow or to invest. <laughs> so just on that, Garrick, um, remember we borrow through the special agency, so we get very extremely good rates. I'm correct in saying that. Katrina, yes, aren't I? It's yes. absolutely local government funding authority. Okay, so Pam, you had another question? Yeah, just on that local government um, borrowing, Katrina, um, we, because of the level of our borrowings, we're now a guarantor under that. With, if our level of borrowings go over the 20 million, does that increase? the amount that we have to do for our guarantor amount or um, does that change the, the, the specifics around that guarantor amount? No, it doesn't. Um, so every year we need to report to LGFA our debt levels, our debt to equity levels and debt to assets and all sorts of measures that um, they uh, they look at to ensure that we are that our council is falling within the uh, within the range. We've got a lot of capacity in that, so mm -hmm. we're we're not at any risk at the moment of getting into the danger zone, for want of a better word. And LGA FGA monitors that, and we've been discussing that with us as well. Um, so there's no concerns that we are um, exceeding any of our um, our debt ratios at the moment or will likely in the future. Okay, so what is the limit on on our um, on our debt amount? What is that top level that we you could say we go out go up to without um, top of my head I don't know. I'm sorry Pam, I would have to go back and have a look. Um, I would imagine it's something around the thirty million dollar mark. Okay. which is our debt cap in um, the long-term plan is around that. I wouldn't like to see us up there. <laughs> no. No. Thank you. Okay, so if uh, no one's got any further questions, Katrina, thank you so much for all your time and patience in supplying all these extra details that we've asked of you. And thanks, everyone, for joining the, our little Zoom far meeting. I really appreciate all your input. You've 
raised some really good and interesting topics and questions. So I really appreciate it. And thank you, Kit, as well, for your first attendance. I'm sorry it's not in person. Uh, next time we'll all be able to shake hands and give a hug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Steph and Suzanne as well, who are sitting there in the background, most appreciated. So with that, I'd like to declare this meeting closed and thank you very much, all of you. Awesome, kakido. Great, yeah, great Good meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye.